Good morning. It's me, Mikey Pipes. Hope all is well. Happy Thursday. Today is Thursday, October 28th, 2021. It is 7.38 in the morning. Just left my house, heading over to a job not too far away, where I was at last week for a boiler tune-up. And it had astronomical amounts of CO in the, com the flue gases, the combustion gases. Like I always say, if you ain't testing, you're guessing. Installed a uh, spill switch on the draft diverter, just as a little insurance policy. Make sure everyone stays safe. But nonetheless, the homeowner decided, you know, listen, we're not going to run it. And we are going to just replace it. And that's what we're doing this morning. Taking out an old federal, I believe, gas fire two zone valve boiler. And we're going to install a Whale McLean CGA4 with two ECM circulators. All right, let's get going. Here's a pair of channel locks. See, there's a, good, there's a reason why we keep you around. You're tiny enough to get in between tight spots. You like tight things, Daniel? <laughs> He's not gonna answer that. <laughs> so, this federal boiler, this little baby boiler, packs a powerful punch. It's coming out. And the gas is okay. We maybe we'll replace from here. It's open? Yeah. Excellent. All right, so now let me see if it's draining. Let me put this in the driveway instead. Oh, okay. You may want to pop the relief valve and then open, manually open both zones. There you go, and just manually open both zones. And then we can start disassembly. No, oh, she's there. Several people commented in the video where, you know, I was speaking about replacing it, and they said, well, just clean it, right? Looks pretty clean to me. A little filthy. Right? I just see huge, huge, huge passageways in between the sections of the heat exchanger, but I don't see anything. I don't see anything crazy in there. Well, it's a little dusty and dirty, but cleaning this would have been a moot point. It's kind of like cleaner than the wall clean. Yeah, yeah, right? Man. So what would have been the point to have cleaned this except wasting the customer's time and money, especially my time? And that's why we're replacing it. And this little bad boy's got some weight to it too. Is this worse? Um, what's the pressure read? Zero. Yeah, that still works. That's cool. Yeah. They don't make things like they used to. Try to cater gauge. Okay, full disclosure. Always uncut, unedited, raw. Everything's gone. See? Daniel cleaned up. We have the new boiler, the Whale McLean CGA4 boiler. One of the nicest things about this, besides it being compact, is that it has an automatic, I'm sorry, it has a uh, low water cutoff built in. Um, just keep that. I may use the cover again, but I have a new switch. We'll do new electrical. So now that it's cleaned up, we're going to start prepping this thing. I got everything I need here. Got a bunch of stuff from supplyhouse.com, real people, real service. Not a sponsor of the channel. Shame on you, but Webstone is. Webstone, they make these awesome, awesome circulator isolation flanges. You're going to see those in action. All right, let's get All going. Right. I really don't have room in there to work on the left side of the boiler with all the piping. So I'm assembling most of it now. Here, this was going to circulator, boiler circulator. We're not using that. I'm using a, two, uh, a switching relay instead. So I'm, I just cut this out with a sawzall for right now. I'll bang this out later. Uh, this is a inch and a quarter by three quarter heel tee. This is on the return side. I have a two zone um, pre-made manifold, inch and a quarter by three quarter. 
and I just threw on one valve here, and I got the cap on top. I'm going to throw the other one there, and then I'm going to put in a three-quarter press by male adapter on both for my two zones. I'll make this one the possibly upstairs, and this one the ground floor. So let me put that other valve on right now. I know my extended warranty on my car is up. It never stops, I swear. It never stops. Uh, slight issue. What issue is that? I don't weigh enough to hold it down from spinning. Are you using the, uh, that brace? No. Why not? Which brace? Let me show you. As soon as I finish this. You don't weigh enough, by the way, to hold it back to keep it from spinning. <laughs> Let's go see what he's talking about. Daniel, you don't weigh enough to keep it from spinning. It was literally lifting me in the air. Uh, all right, you may have to take the, uh, see if it goes on. Dum, da dum, dum. This is the rigid tri-stand. This one survived the fire. Still works. It's metal. Yeah, take it off. <laughs> Don't! And Daniel was also trying to squirt the oil in it and realized the brand new rigid oiler still had the cap on it. <laughs> oh, wait till your mother sees that. She's going to be disappointed in you. She's gonna ask you questions though. <laughs> Alright, so now you can thread that with the vise. Make sure make sure it's nice and tight and it won't lift you up while you're trying to thread. There you go. <laughs> Did it really lift you up? Yeah. All the way up. <laughs> yeah. Do you like basketball? Or are you just going because you have fun? I'm going because I have fun. And it's fun. And I got great seats. <laughs> that really helps. And it's interesting. The uh, when your brother goes, when is he going? Sunday? I mean, next Friday. When he goes, there's there's four seats in front of him, the only row in front of him, and then you know there's the court. And the guy has had season tickets at the Barclays Center for the Nets for the past six years. He started all the way at the top of the section and slowly made his way to the bottom, right? Because demand, supply and demand, like the weight. I just got lucky. You know, the year, the like a few months before COVID, like in, in I think it was February of 2020, I went to a Nets game. I had like, I was sitting like 10 rows back off the court. I had a great time. I was like, you know what? F it. Let me put a deposit on season tickets for next year. And I did, $500 deposit. And then COVID came. All right, so a lot of people did a lot of people didn't didn't renew. So I happened to pick up like literally the best seats in the house at the best price. Amazing. So it was a great time last night. They lost again though. Anyway, I'm behind the boiler, guys, as you can see. Uh, we threw in a 90 with a little close nipple right there for the boiler drain, because I didn't I wanted to make this, the next guy's life a little bit easier. Whoever's got to service this thing, because then the drain is gonna be against the wall. So we did it like that. We'll point that down. Daniel's using the Nipix channel lock right there. These are so good. These are so much better than the regular channel locks. I know they are. They're the best. You know, and they're not team red, but they're not the real channel locks either. Come on, Daniel. Put some you didn't have your Wheaties again this morning, didn't you? What did I have this morning? A tuna sandwich. A tuna sandwich for breakfast? Yeah. <laughs> nice. Do you like celery with peanut butter? Uh I never like had celery at my house. But... Oh. Okay. Thought I'd ask. I like celery. Yeah, I like celery too. So, well, I like celery with blue cheese, especially. I hate blue cheese. Do you really? So much. I, oh, hate it so I much. love blue cheese. Blue cheese and buffalo wings. I tried to eat it the other day and I couldn't. <laughs> All right. Well, I am gonna, we're going to slide this a little bit more towards me. I'll get us a little bit more closer to the wall. I'm going to line this up to here. Press that in. And then we'll bang out this one, which is a return. Yep. Underground. A little dangerous. Unknown caller. Oh, unknown caller. All right. Let's get to work. All right. 932. Supplies are ready to be piped in. This is the Webstone 
isolation valve for expansion tank and water feed. This is the Kalefi half inch pressure reducing valve with gauge. I cracked the glass when I was tightening it. I think I have a replacement in the truck. And then we have our backflow preventer there, half inch. And the only thing we have to do is these are a little fakakt. We have to move that over a little bit. And then we'll make, I guess we'll take this one. We'll make this up there because it's right in line with it, basically. <laughs> and then I got to bring that pipe, which is the supply for the first floor, or ground floor to here. And then water, wiring, vent, done. All right. Show you what I got done so far. 952. Supply and returns are done. We already went over that. Got enough clearance there, we're good. On the top of this boiler, a 90 nipple Webstone air separator, pre-made two zone manifold, Tego 0015E, first floor, second floor, the Webstone isolation flanges with purge. Now, a lot of you ask, why are you doing this on the supply side? doesn't really matter. If I want to put purge, a purge station over there, it's doing the same exact thing as keeping it right there. So I'm just flowing in water when I'm purging from the return, through the return, and out through there. So all the air is gone. Same thing as doing it over there. No big deal. I added this Webstone isolation T for an expansion tank. Then I added a nipple, a Kalefi, Half inch pressure reducing valve. I love it. Great, great, great Italian engineering. And this is a backflow preventer. We're going to pipe this in next. Daniel's working on the gas. We're going to change out the gas cock, put a T there, come across, union, new valve, and connect to the gas valve. So right now I'm going to start working on the electric. But I, I was just about to do that and I saw this old Loco sign. Take a look at this. Forced hot water system. What to do. What the customer should do before the cool day is a fall. And it gives you all that stuff. So feel free to pause right there and check that out. It's pretty cool. Back in the days, Loco, Long Island Lighting Company, also supplied the gas and they also supplied the service to the boilers for all the customers. So plumbers did not work on gas boilers back then because Loco did it for free. And we're not touching that. That's as is. There's my half inch water feed for the boiler. We're gonna connect it to there shortly. And I'm gonna work on the electric now. All right, let's go. All right, Daniel is so finishing up the gas. I have a question for you. Okay, answer. I wasn't thinking about the union when I was doing the three quarter. Yeah. Is it all right if I put it on the half? Sure. sure. Generally, we like to keep the unions outside the, the, the fixture. Yeah. But um, it is what it is. Keep that in mind for future reference. Oh, well. So we, we cut a new piece of three quarter. We got a full three quarter T there. Drip leg below is coming. Gas cock, another nipple. A three quarter by half inch reducing 90 there. And we're gonna make the connection to the gas valve right there. While Daniel was doing that, I was working on the electric. And I'm gonna show you guys something a little new right now. Something that, may, that if you've Viewing this channel for the first time, you may not have seen before. And I'm gonna show you that right now. These are the two circulators. They're not called pumps, ladies and gentlemen. They're called circulators because they circulate water. They don't pump. They don't pump anything, they circulate, all right? They get wired to 110 volts. My black is my line and white is neutral. There's no green here, so I don't need to use that. But you may be interesting, like, what is this? See these things? Let me show you one. This right here is called Owego. And these are from Europe, right? And they're levers. And what's great about these is that they're reusable. Forget about they're ridiculously expensive compared to regular wire nuts, but they actually do a great job and they can hold back tons and tons and tons of, of amperage. God forbid there's a short. Wago lever 221. This is a two conductor 
connector and I'm going to show you a three connector, three conductor connector because I'm going to use that inside my junction box right there. When Daniel gets out of the way doing the gas, I'm going to bring power from my source and bring it down to there with a switch and that switch is going to control power going to this. Something else I want to show you new for the first time on this channel. This is the Honeywell uh, three zone switching relay. It's a brand new product from Honeywell and it's not labeled Residio. It's actually labeled Honeywell, which I don't know why they did that anyway, Residio. Like, well, come on, it's Honeywell. Everyone knows what Honeywell is, but this is the model HPS R103. Three zone switching relay. Now, yes, there's only two zones on this property, but I always like to like give a little extra. So if there ever is going to be a third zone here, if you're already wired for it. And I really, really, really like this, this relay panel over the Taco. I have a dedicated ground bus right there, even though we never have ground and I don't have ground there anyway, but at least I can ground everything together, which is basically the boiler to this. Um, but on the line voltage controls here, we have input, which is 110 volts. We have priority zone one, zone two, zone three, directly above. 24 volt thermostat connections, R, W, C. So red, which is hot, white is the heating circuit, C is common. So if you have three wire or multiple wires going to, let's say a smart thermostat, you already have that built in. Over here, we got boiler, TT. So we're gonna take TT and bring it down there to TT. And we also have an end switch for priority. So if we have to wire priority for zone one, we're gonna use that and we're gonna, we could turn those off right there. Easy peasy. Only thing I have to do left now, secure this. I want to show you the way it goes. Bring power from there to there. And I got the BX nice and secure, looks nice and pretty. We'll put the cover on, wire thermostat, and Daniel will finish up with the flu. All right, stay tuned. It is only 1040. There it is, October 28th. Started at 8 a.m. It's not even three hours later. Gas is being done on the boiler, getting it done. I don't play games. And it's just me and Daniel, by the way. The other mic is running service calls. Getting it All done. right, one more thing I want to show you guys. And that is, instead of using the grinder, like I always do for BX, I'm going to use the Roto Zip. This is by Klein. I've had this for about, I don't know, about 15 years. It's well beat up, and I just don't like using it because it never really cuts for me and you guys are gonna say see I, now i got a good cut you guys are gonna say oh you need a new blade well i've replaced the blade on it and it's still it's hit or, hit or miss and if i hit it you know it's good for it's golden i'll cut right through this this bx in a few seconds but i just find the grinder that much easier that much easier so that's cut there now I gotta throw in a redhead. The redhead is basically a red bushing, as you can see right there. And that's to protect the wire from that sharp edge right there, as you can see. All right. Ah. This little stupid plastic thing. Cut this off. And then I'm gonna bring this down to there. So I'm gonna tie that in once I'm done here with the switch. And there's my thermostat, but let me get this done first. And it's very, very easy. Let me show you how easy it is. We have, this is line and neutral going to the boiler. This is line and neutral going to the relay. And this is line and neutral giving me power. So this is, I'm gonna put this into here, right? I'm gonna pull this down, right? And I'm gonna, Take a Phillips screw and tighten up that screw to hold this back. I'm just gonna put a switch here. All right, so let me show you what I did. Here's my switch. All right, we're gonna mount that to the box once I'm done with this. I took all of my neutrals and I tied them together. So this is the Wago 221 three lever connector, three, le three conductor uh, lever connector, sorry. <laughs> On, here's my line coming in, goes through the switch, leaving the switch, I just created a pigtail here, and that's gonna feed the boiler and the relay. 
And I'm just gonna just push this stuff in. I still gotta hook up the, the ground, which is kind of a moot point because like I said, there's no ground up there. So this is connected to the switch and to the boiler and that's it, no ground. And the house is really not that old. I think it's from the 1970s, but it is what it is. All right, I sent Daniel to the supply house to <clears throat> get a six by five smoke reducer and two six inch Nine, uh, six inch night smoke 90s and because I, I accidentally took a seven by five smoke reducer from the shop this morning and of course Ferguson's got nothing absolutely nothing in stock the one in Lindbrook so the only thing left I have to do is the wiring and water but I, I was went to the truck have a little union break you know what I mean right and I took off the rating plate which is metal off of the old boiler and also the lighting instructions. It says instructions on how to operate. And just for nostalgic reasons, I'm gonna put it right here. And just to, as a memory of what was here before, which is pretty epic right there. See, it's a little personalized touch right there. So there's the plate, and now the instructions. I will put that right below it. Right there, and then make it nice and level, okay. And right there, take a look at that. <laughs> Isn't that a nice touch? In case you want a, another closer view, the Federal Boiler Company of Midland Park, New Jersey, Division of Federal Hydronics. This was a, an input of 125,000 BTUs and an output of 100,000 net 75. It's a model TC125, series number was 2671. Take a look at those lighting instructions. Feel free to pause. All right, still waiting for Daniel, so just taking the liberty to tighten up the flanges one-handedly. Okay, those are very nice, very nice isolation flanges by Webstone, the Nipco company. Special shout out to them, sponsor of the channel. Let's count how many Webstone items we have here. We'll count this as a pair, so one, Two, three, four, five, and the two valves, six. I'm using six valve related products that Webstone makes that helps speed up the job. This right here saves a nipple, a T, a valve. You know, this part right here saves about I don't know, let's call it, let's say four minutes, right? And God forbid it is a leak, then you gotta take it all apart, you know, but one little item like that, it adds value to the installation. And this is about 50 bucks, $40, whatever it is, I don't really know, but it just builds value of the system and it shows just the quality of the installer, Kalefi, and the backflow. All right, let me work on the water while I'm waiting for Daniel. I'm gonna throw in the half inch, Press 90 there, and then I'll maybe make a bend with the bender. All right, you're gonna have to forgive me. I haven't done this in a while. <laughs> Last time I did this was on the steam boiler we did for a YouTube subscriber. Actually, the first boiler we did for a YouTube subscriber, I bro broke out this bender, which the master plumber that I learned under many, many, many years ago gave to me when he retired. <laughs> So I have the pipe in place. I'm gonna use that bender and make a 90 degree bend. The goal is to mark the pipe where you want the 90 in line with that right here. And uh, hopefully I can do it. So let's see, I'm a little rusty. All right, hopefully doesn't, this doesn't turn into an embarrassing moment. Oh, 
Oh, look at that. I did it. Pop the pin out. And there we go. Look at that. A nice 90 with L. All right. There's my 90. I had to create a little offset because the depth of that is a little bit past that. So hopefully I did good. <laughs> we'll see. Let me throw a 90 on it. Throw that in there and see how we did. You know, I got to admit. Damn, that's hot. Damn it, that's so fucking hot. Wow. I still got it in me. Look at that. Wow, it's hot and sexy. He's back. You just missed something pretty epic, by the way. What? Skills. Skills. I should. Did you change the? Did you take off the supply though? No. Oh. But you know what that is on the floor? The conduit cover. Oh, well, it's a bender. Oh. But it's made for a half inch L tubing. Let me show you what I. You bent the supply line. Yeah, I did. Watch. This is pretty epic. I'm actually kind of quite proud of myself. Let's take a look at that. Oh, I thought you bent it on like the side that was. Oh no 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 no! I just made the piece of pipe and I saved myself one, two, three, three fittings. Cool, that looks nice too. It does look nice. It looks pretty pretty effing sick. Now I gotta press it in, turn the water on, and while well, you finish that. So Ferguson had has bupkis. But CNL had. I saw Mike there too. Oh, yeah? Was he getting a one inch gas cock? I don't know what he was getting. Uh. <laughs> I just told him he didn't have one, I needed. <laughs> All right, for the next part, I'm going to use my fluke meter. I keep the 116 in my install bag, which I didn't bring. I've been using my service bag, my maintenance bag, lately, and I haven't taken the big veto out of my truck in, I don't know, since. Uh, what was his name? Glenn? Who's the guy I had working? Who, uh, he interned for a day. You don't remember? Before your, I was before your time, but he, we think, secretly worked for Testo. He was, a mess, he was from New, uh, Connecticut, and he came. He drove two and a half hours, three hours to work me for the day, but he told me to get that bag, and I've had it ever since. But I keep this meter in my installation and in my former daily veto. The next part of the video is we're going to determine which zone set which set of wires control which zone now i have red and white and blue and yellow i'm using five wire because i didn't want to bring another set of wires over there so i had thermostat wires come down over there i spliced in one pair with red and white the other pair yellow and blue both thermostats are off i have it set for continuity we're going to see make sure we have no continuity Want to hold that for a second? Yeah. Why okay. don't you need to use that meter? Because I it, it does that. Your other one doesn't? It does it, but I like this, the solid. That's for continuity, and it works. So there's nothing there, and there is nothing there. Now I'm going to go to the, the ground floor thermostat and raise up the temperature and determine which is the ground floor, which I'm going to wire to zone one. All right. Want to take a guess if it's yellow and blue or it's red? Blue. That's what I think. Right, hold that for a second. You think it is? All right. So let's go for red and white first. Uh, oh, hold on. Make sure. <laughs> you lost. So red and white is ground floor. And then we'll double check, turn on the thermostat on the second floor, and then wire those in. Jennifer's on that AC job. Exactly. Oh, yeah. The the uh, April or oh, the Honeywell, the Honeywell uh, zone control for dampers. Yeah. So it looks very nice. And you know what? It kind of matches the boiler. You know, I'm like that Taco green. And again, I picked this up at uh, Jackson Systems and they're an HVAC and plumbing supplier online. And they're supposed to custom imprint pipe doctor on there, but they didn't. So we're going to start purging now. I have hose hooked up. We're gonna spin this around. That away. See? And I'm gonna make sure those are two split, um, it's a split, re yeah, split return for the first floor. So I'm gonna close one of those isolation valves and go from there. Daniel, I just realized I messed up something here. 
I'm always worried. I'm always trying to keep care of, make sure everything's nice and even and parallel. These are good. These are good. Those aren't. Don't messed up. Yep. All right. Stupid mistake, but. Nobody's ever in the notice tag except for you. Yeah. And the trolls on YouTube. <laughs> Who probably might not have even noticed it. Exactly. Unless I, meant, unless I did mention it. But you notice how I took the staple gun and I stapled the thermostat oh. wire to the wall? Nice and pretty. Did you notice that? Yeah, I didn't know if you put that I took that off the old boiler when you were gone. And, uh... Why'd you put it on the wall? Just for, you know, just memory. Nostalgic purposes, you know? Looks nice. Alright. Let me... Give me that flat screwdriver. Let me just lower back the pressure to where it should be. All right, 12 PSI, close this, and you know what we're ready for? Open it. It's all good. Team Red. All right, flip the switch on. I oh, can't. no. I didn't put a drip leg in. You didn't put a drip leg in, and the gas is still off to the house. And we gotta add a, a drip leg to the vent here. Yeah, try it on. I like this relay, by the way. So neat. Look at that. It's so pretty. Nice blue for a thermostat call. The verification pump is on. Very nice. You got air. A lot of air. Yeah. Try, let's try again. Alternatively, then you're going to have to crack the union and get the air out. All right, we're cracking that union. With the power off. Get the air out of the line. I smell I gas. Smell it, yeah. it up. Unknown caller. Crack, turn the power on. And then hopefully we have ignition. Yeah. We have ignition, we have pilot. Houston, we have ignition. We have ignition. What time is it, Daniel? 12.06. Oh, man, 12 o'clock? Damn, I want to be out of here by 12. It is what it is. All right, we just got to make a drip leg. We'll put a male, press by male adapter, a half inch, and five feet of half inch copper. We'll put a nice little bend on it, a little offset, and bring that down to the floor. Clean up and be up out of here. The tubing cutter? Yes, it is. All right, approximately six inches above the top of the boiler. Drill a hole for combustion analysis. But before we do combustion analysis, when you work with Mikey Pipes and the Pipe Doctor, you get to learn something new every day. And Daniel was kind of close when he said, call this a conduit cutter, but it's actually a half inch copper tubing bender. And I will make the first bend for him and then he will do the next. <laughs> Here. So, don't get it. Hold that. Now, it's always easier. Uh, which way? Da -da -da -da. I'm retarded right now. Okay, there you go. I'm just gonna slide that in there, like that. Boom. Now, I don't need that much of an offset. I think only a couple inches, but we're just gonna make a nice little 45 bend and another 45 bend, all right? And there's markings on there, as you can see. So there's 45. All right, and we'll pop the pin out like that. And we're gonna put this back contraption back in there. And I should probably take a measurement, but let's take a measurement. Our center to there, to the center to there, is, looks like four and a half inches. And if you see, four and a half inches is gonna put, put this right there. So I need to give this two two and a half or less of an of an offset between the 45s now two and a half. i'm probably gonna get this wrong and i'm probably gonna be criticized for showing you the wrong way of doing it but nonetheless like i said i haven't done this in quite a long time first you want to make sure that this is not down like this or up like that you want to make sure it's level with the pipe that you're working with right so two and a half 
there. I should have marked it first, but I'm just gonna try to eyeball it. And two and a half or less. If I put it there, that is gonna be more. So let's put this right there. Again, I'm doing it eyeballing it right now. It's probably not gonna work, but let's see. Right there. And I may be exactly at two and a half, let's see. Right there, okay. And I wanna go to 45. Let's see what the difference is. Holy shit. It's exactly like two and a half inches. Let's go see. Holy fucking shit. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> all right, all we need to do is get a hand. It really does look pretty effing sick. When I first started doing plumbing, I worked for this guy, his name was Tommy, right? And this was after I was doing steam, steam fitting at the US Merchant Marine Academy in Kings Point, right? So my first real like plumbing job for, as like a civilian, like doing like residential work, was a guy named Tommy. And Tommy did high-end plumbing work on the North Shore. We worked in like these literally Taj Mahals. Literally tied them home, like the one, even bigger than the one in that video. Oh, come on. Daniel, now you moved it. Did I move everything? Yeah, well, you moved that. Push it back. Okay. And he had that bender. And I just went crazy. I, I, if I didn't have to use a fitting, except a coupling, I was golden. I used the bender all the effing time. One time I had to, I had to make a line from a for a steam shower, and we're in like Upper Brookville, and it's a 20 foot section of pipe going through whole, like turns, 45s, this, this, and that, but I wanted to make it in two pieces of pipe with one cup, it was 20 feet long, right? And I did it, it was dead on perfect. Just like how that is. Oh, and they gotta put it in a hole. Yeah, well, so you don't like, you rather bend than use couplings? Than fittings? Oh, yeah, yeah, why not? Fittings. Stick it in the hole. Now I gotta. What's the matter? Is it in? Yeah, it's in, but it's, it's a little wonky. Now you're in. And... Yeah, it's perfectly parallel with the other one. It just happens to be touching the boiler, but it's fine. It's only a drip leg, which is never really gonna drip. Look at that. Damn, I'm good. Damn! Damn! All right, why is my other circulator on for the for second? And... Your it doesn't matter. So I have to unlock it with a screwdriver. And oh, priority is on. That's why. Priority off. Bingo. And now the other circulator is flashing. And now she's pumping out heat. Wow, it got hot fast. Oh, yeah? Why are you making noise, buddy? Oh, we got some air in there, huh? Oh, interesting. We got some air. All right, I purged out that zone. And now she's circulating again. And let's make sure both zones gets hot. And we'll do a combustion test and get it back. All right, well, Daniel's finishing cleaning up, putting on valve tags, making sure the work area is nice and clean, broom swept. I'm gonna use the FLIR i7 to make sure that all of our sources of heat output are working properly. FLIR i7, it's not only great for finding Navy and heat exchanger leaks, but it's, <laughs> but it's also great at confirming and validating that the heat is working properly. So let's start walking through the house. All right, do they have anything here? Let's see, yes. We have baseboard heat down there. And it's all nice and toasty, even behind there. Okay, let's check this other room right here. It is heating up very nice, as you can see. 
See the heat going up the wall. Another piece of baseboard right there. Very nice, looks like slant fin, number 30. Uh, let's see, I think there's a bathroom right here. Yes, there is. Perfect. All right, and there's a bedroom. Perfect. Good, now let's head on upstairs. Blazing hot, good. Good. Yes, ma'am. Of course. I'm just to make sure everything's working, heating up properly. And then we're done. Okay. Very nice. There's another piece. The heat is coming up? The heat is up, yes. Okay. Bathroom. Very nice, I got a peak of 153, so it's heating. Oh, he's not a helper. He's a, he's a technician. I could actually use a helper. It's okay. I can use a helper. I'm actually, I would like to hire someone ex-military who wants to learn. And, you know, again, the pay is minimal. But uh, that's what I would ideally like to have. Someone, someone like... Retired military, yes. maybe you like got disabled, like in you know first responder, and right. just really just wants to like be a schlepper and help. Okay. So I like to find, but good luck with that because no one wants to work. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And you advertise for that? Oh, there must be an organization you could call. I think there is. I think there is. I, I'm gonna have to look into that because yeah. ideally, if I can get like a, uh, you know. Former military guy? Right. Be nice. Good yeah, definitely. Job. Exactly. All right. So, everything's working. Daniel's just about done. How did the combustion test look? It looks good. Take it out. What kind of uh, CO are we looking at? 14, I think. All right. 14, 6.5% O2. And where's CO2? 8.13%. 20 particle. Parts, sorry, parts per million ppm of carbon dioxide. Was that? Oh, not undiluted. The other one was... Which could be zero because the testo's 20 off. You're right. <laughs> the testo is 20 off. And we got the service sticker right there. Today is the 27th or 28th? 27. All right, new install. Oh, shoot. Is it, was that yesterday? I don't know. Let me see who's hollering now. All right, it is a little after one o'clock in the, in the afternoon. The job is complete, cleaned up. We're gonna head on over to the shop, dump all the garbage, and I'm gonna run a service call. Customer's got uh, no hot water, the pilot is out. And maybe I'll take Daniel with me and uh, just you know, run a, run, a, run a service call together. All right, hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you enjoyed a couple of techniques like the Wagos, like the Nipix uh, wire stripper, like even the half inch tubing bender still got my touch on that so make sure you smash that thumbs up button if you haven't done so already subscribe there is no cost or obligation literally it just helps grow the channel and increase reach and if you want a thumbs down be my guest and go play in traffic and kick rocks be well god bless stay safe